maybe what I should show is um, some things that I do differently from your textbook. Um, so let me point out those so that you can watch out for um, where to maybe read the textbook more carefully so that you can compare the two approaches. So when I do some things differently with the textbook, that doesn't mean either of us are wrong. It just means I have different preference from people who wrote the textbook. <laughs> Here's one thing that's different. When you look at the double solid interference, I think you will find that they don't derive any expression for intensity. Uh, so here, this is the kind of the intro, and I think they talk about the, the phase difference. Do they even talk? Yeah, they talk about the, oh wait, they don't even talk about the phase difference. They, they, they talk about the different conditions that lead to the different interference conditions, um, but they don't, uh, uh, and I'll use a simulation to kind of illustrate what this is trying to show. I'm trying to do that in the last five minutes. And um, in the mathematics of interference, that's where they work out the path length difference, how that relates to the phase difference. And, um, and um, so I, I do all this too. Now, what they don't do is they never really teach you how to drive uh, these expressions for the the intensity of light on the screen. And technically for a ideal double slit interference, this should be like a flat uniform thing. This uh, decreasing thing that's more of a non-ideal setup. So, um, anyway, so, so in the textbook, they don't teach you to drive those interference um, pattern intensity, like as a function of position. And even with the multiple solid interference, when they cover it, I think they don't, yeah, and they, and they don't teach you how to drive these expressions. They just show you what it looks like. Um, in chapter four, they address a little bit of that, um, but they do it by teaching you the most difficult scenario. So this is uh, um, so this is more looking forward to the uh, next week. So with a single slit diffraction, I mean, I think. So this is more for next week. I encourage you to look at it, <laughs> but um, I won't be using this approach. I will uh, teach you to do it a little bit differently. Um, so, so your textbook in chapter three, in going through double slit interference, they don't teach you how to drive the expression for the intensity. Um, I think when they do double slit diffraction, yeah, they still, they talk about missing orders, but they don't, again, teach you how to drive the expression for the interference pattern. I do it, and uh, there's a reason I do it. So I do it here, intensity calculation. Um, I do it here, and I really do it here for a, a purpose of comparing this with what you're going to see next week, because what you will see here is that um, it takes quite a bit of time. It, um, so, you know, from the introduction to some description of conceptual approach. And actually just the, after you, I've introduced everything, calculation alone will take another 23 minutes of edited video. And uh, the key thing here is that this is with the real function. This is with the trigonometric sinusoidal functions. And that, that that's gonna be lengthy. And uh, if you are not in my physics 4B, you might be asking um, what other way is there? Isn't this, uh, no matter how complicated it is, isn't that the only way to do this? And uh, my answer is that there's a better, easier way, but it involves complex functions. Uh, so I have to teach you some uh, formalism using complex functions, complex exponentials. So we'll do that next week. And because I want to tie that, because you know, complex functions, it's, um, um, it's somewhat abstract. And I think when we are introducing abstract, highly formalistic approach, it's good to have something real to compare it to. So that's why I really want to do this this week. <laughs> so that next week when I introduce, um, and I think you can see it, uh, look ahead in the modules, um, at least you know, that, that it's there. Um, so, so next week, when we are going to need to deal with the single solid diffraction and your textbook uses phasers and things that are 
frankly, too complicated for me to want to lecture on. You will see us do that much more simply using um, uh, using the complex exponentials. I think I do it here. So, so that's coming up. And um, I, I guess, uh, so for this week, what I would have you uh, watch out for is, um, is just this uh, uh, selection of lectures that uh, doesn't have counterpart in your textbook, but I, I think it's an uh, uh, important background for you to have uh, before you jump into complex exponentials next week. Um, yeah, so, so I, th I think that's the biggest uh, kind of thing to highlight. Um, I think we cover most of what's in the text of, uh, yeah, um, at least. I might not have any Michelson interferometer homework, but uh, there is lecture and there's textbook description. This, uh, I really want you to have seen it uh, for later when we do special relativity, because this is a setup for what's called the Michelson Morley experiment that was uh, important in establishing uh, one of the postulates of special relativity. So 